Hello, I'm Carrie from Cookbook Divas, and today I'm so excited that my local library is finally accepting books back through the return slot. After months of holding on to this cookbook, I lost it on a shelf and forgot to do a cookbook look-through of it. So let's jump in because I have to return this today so I can get more cookbooks from the library now that they're finally taking holds. Yes! This is Salt and Time by Alyssa Timoshkina. And I believe, is it Russian or Ukrainian? I see lots of snow. And, oh, recipes from a Russian kitchen. And I've taken a couple of Russian cooking classes over at my lo local PCC Natural Markets here in Seattle. Loved them, and I have, of all the cooking classes I've taken, I've actually made some of the Russian recipes. Like when you make take ravioli making class, you're like, that's cute, I'll do it on a weeknight. No. But Russian food, I have been, especially because they use so much mayonnaise in their recipes. I love mayonnaise. Let's find out what's going to be in this cookbook. Introduction, ingredients, and pantry. We'll take a quick look through. Chapter 1 is appetizers, sides, and salads. Chapter 2 is soups. Chapter 3 is main dishes. Chapter 4, pickles and ferments. Chapter 5, desserts. Chapter 6, drinks. Oh, and suppliers. That is going to come in handy because you can't always get Russian ingredients if you don't live in a big city like I do. Okay. So far, the photography is okay. Random small pictures of her. Mm, I want bigger pictures. Okay. <clears throat> Here's some of the ingredients she's going to ask for. What on earth? Bird cherry. Similar in appearance to elderflower trees, bird cherry trees blossom all over Russia in May. And the dark berries are pounded into a flour, which is used for making dough and pie fillings. Okay, that's hard. Okay. Rye bread, sourdough rye, buckwheat. Okay. Edible fiddlehead ferns. I live in Seattle, and I actually have fiddlehead ferns in the woods by my house, but they're kind of hard to find. And I, unless you go to a specialty farmer's market, that's kind of hard to find. Herring. Sea buckthorn. Hmm. It's getting complicated. Smetana. Don't know what that is. We'll look it up later. Russian spices are black pepper, coriander, caraway, and fennel seeds are key. And, okay. Korean spices, because there's some Soviet Korean recipes in this book. Sunflower oil. Dvorog and smetana go together like burger and fries. It's a Scottish, or excuse me, Slavic relative of cottage cheese. Okay. And unshelled pine nuts. Oh, I have lots of those right now, actually. Oh, and the chapter starts off. I wasn't ready for it yet. Okay, appetizers, sides, and salads. She's teaching us about Russian cuisine. I like that. Now, if you haven't watched a lot of my cookbook look-throughs, I'm not going to show you the whole book because that's not fair to the author and publisher. Just giving you a little hint, and I don't want to spoil it all for you. You can get it from your library or buy it. But we're just going to kind of check out what it's like. Okay. Food photography is very, um, I'd say, moody, dramatic. It's nice. This is rye crustini three ways. This is dill butter, radishes, and charred scallions. I would make that. Then we have a couple things with no pictures, but I guess I could imagine putting the stuff on bread. Tarragon, dvorog, roasted beets, and pickled grapes. Pickled grapes? That sounds good. I can't try it because I have a naughty dog in my house who likes to eat grapes out of the trash, and grapes are toxic to dogs, so I can't have them in the house. Russian, is it dukkha butter or dukkha? D-U-K-K-A-H? I need to look up how to pronounce that with fennel tops. Okay, zucchini dip. Tiny little picture of what it's supposed to look like. Doesn't help me learn how to cook it, but that said, zucchini dip would be hard to photograph and look attractive and delicious. But that sounds really good. They use uh, sunflower oil, onions, garlic, zucchinis, dried mint, chopped dill, Greek yogurt, black pepper. We have all those ingredients in our houses, right? Crab salad with charred corn. Lots of ingredients going on for the pickled relish, for the charred corn, for the crab meat. Okay, that's a lot going on. Cured fish, a summer classic. I'm going to skip by that because I'm vegetarian. <gasps> oh, this is interesting. I just got super excited. This section is vegetable patties with dipping sauces. I'm vegetarian. This is beet patties with horseradish cream. I never thought of making beets into patties, and that looks really good. I don't personally care for horseradish, but you can make it. Carrot patties with coriander yogurt. 
potato and sauerkraut patties with dill sour cream and crispy shallots. Yum! This is sounding really good. Soviet Korean ceviche. Okay, let's talk about the ingredients because I'm very curious. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm squinting because I need glasses, but they don't look good on me. I don't want to traumatize your eyeballs. Skinless cod, sesame oil, cayenne pepper, salt, sugar, fish sauce, sesame oil, grated zest, lemon, clove, white wine vinegar, onion, coriander seeds, carrot. Hmm. That's, that's not hard. Hmm. What makes it Korean? I don't know. Buckwheat vinaigrette salad. Looks healthy. Bunch of random pictures with no explanations of what they are. Really? Mm, okay. Mm, I'm not a fan. Okay. Babushka ganoush. Oh, see, I thought baba ganoush was Mediterranean, not Russian, but there must be some explanation on what makes it different. Eggplant caviar. One of the mo most widespread dishes in former Soviet countries. Prepared in a different way according to what household? Yeah, sounds fair. Lavash wrap. I need more pictures, people. Piroshki stuffed buns. I wouldn't know how to, I wouldn't be confident making this because I don't know what it's supposed to look like. That is dough, creamy mushroom, herbs and feta, cabbage and egg piroshkis. I need more pictures. I don't need a picture of a tree. I need a picture of the food. Deviled eggs with forschmac. Don't know what forschmac is, but, uh, oh, salted herring fillets is one of the ingredients and a Granny Smith apple. Well, what do people in Russia do if they don't have Granny Smith apples? Stroganina Siberian sashimi with a picture of a tree instead of the food. Okay. The largest picture in the book so far. And it's kind of dark. I'm not loving the photography here, are you? I'd love to hear what you think in the comments, but I'm, I'm intrigued by the, the patties. The winter slaw. I think I would keep this cookbook around just to make the recipes, but I wouldn't be like leafing through. Oh, the pictures are so lovely. Herring in furs. I see some pink yogurt dip there. Hmm. Olivier salad. Sounds good. I don't know what this is. Colodets. If the picture was bigger, I might be able to figure it out. The Oh, the ingredients are, prepare yourself, beef shin, carrots, onions, cloves, bay leaves, parsley, black peppercorns, rye bread. Okay. Nice big picture of an Easter party featuring salmon and caviar blini cake, Easter poshka cake, and blinis. Okay. Now we're in the soup chapter. I'm going to briefly go through this because I showed too much of the other chapter. Sorrel and cucumber botvinia. That looks good. Rustic fish soup. Borscht, of course. A picture of a tree again. And a picture of a bunch of herbs being chopped. Okroshka. That looks good. I'm not going to try and pronounce some of these. A mushroom broth with, with an Asian touch. Okay, probably involving fish. Potato and caviar soup. That would be a useful recipe for people to eat caviar. That's that's good. I'm not going to try and pronounce this. Um, this is a waste of two pages. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be negative. I, a picture of some ice and snow and onions and... No, I want pictures of the, the food and what it's supposed to look like. And that's a lot of white space on the table. Just show me the food. <clears throat> okay. Pea soup. Oh, it's an interesting color. I wonder if they mean lentils? Yes, yellow split pea peas. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. My mom's Chinese soup. Ooh, looks hearty. Solyanka fish soup. Rasselnik or Solvik. I need to stop trying to pronounce these. Okay, now she's showing a summer party. Buckwheat vinaigrette salad, semolina cake, sea buck thorn moors. Fermented cucumbers. Ooh, let's try that. Okay, I'm going to skip, skip, skip crayfish and spinach savory rice pudding. Would that be the first thing you ran and got this cookbook to make? But it's interesting. Let's stretch our, let's stretch our minds, be interested, try new things. Spring fish cakes. Those look good if you eat fish. Salmon and caviar blini. Yeah, of course. Eggplant matzo bake. That sounds good. And matzo is easy to get a hold of. Vegan bigos with smashed new potatoes. Something called plov. Millet risotto with pancetta and sage butter. That's probably really good. And this is called Golubsi for the lazy. A labor layered cabbage pie. But is there a picture of the cabbage pie? Yes. Yes. There's a picture of the cabbage pie. I, that cheers me up. Good. That looks good, actually. I'm not a cabbage fan. 
squid poached in smetana sauce. Okay, this is hardcore. And another waste of two pages with random pictures that don't have captions. And then a Kurdic chicken pie, which I'd like to see a picture of. And they have one. Yay, I'm happy. Okay. So let's move on. This we don't ooh, a fern stir fry. If I could get a hold of, I need to go out in the woods and pick some. Hedgehog meatballs in creamy mushroom sauce. They don't mean actual hedgehogs, they're using ground beef. Okay, I was scared. I had to check that. Okay, I like this. I like this kind of picture. Please add more of them on your second edition of this cookbook. Siberian pelmeni dumplings. I took a class on how to make pel pelmeni dumplings, and then I never made them again because I'm lazy. But the class was super fun, and I'm glad I learned it. Chicken with prunes. Okay. Steak with black radish remoulade. That's, see, this is cool. This is why it would be worth keeping this, this cookbook around despite the wasted pictures of trees. Pickles and ferments, very important. Every Russian cooking class I've taken, they're basically like, we eat pickles with everything and we pickle almost everything. That's exciting. And I don't know anything about fermenting, so I think I would learn a lot from this. Cucumbers, cucumbers. Fermented cherry tomatoes, wait, you can do that? See, I, I do like this cookbook. I'm bitching about some of the photos. But this is interesting. Apple, fennel, and dill sauerkraut. If I made that, my boyfriend would be so happy. Honeyed, honey pickled daikon. That's an ingredient we have a lot of here in Seattle. Some random pictures that aren't labeled. Okay. Cabbage and beets. Soviet Korean pickles. Pickled tofu skins. What? Now, I'm vegetarian and I have lots of tofu in the house at all times. I would be very curious to try that and it has very clear looking directions place the dried tofu skin oh you have to get dried tofu skins you don't dry them yourself so i'd have to i'd have to source them from somewhere well there's lots of asian stores in seattle and a picture of some snow instead of a picture of the mushrooms but i guess we know what marinated shiitake mushrooms look like i don't need it spelled out for me that is a nice picture shall we skip ahead to cake okay semolina cake Cerniki donuts, yum, 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 nice. <clears throat> Blini with curd and apricots, cold berry soup. Ooh, I would make that, especially today. It's hot. I'm wearing a t-shirt because it's hot today. Watermelon granita with shortbreads. Mm -hmm. Cute. Zephyrs. I've never heard of that. That's cute. Is it like a meringue? It uses agar flakes and egg whites. Yeah, it's like a, a meringue. Nice. Okay. They really like to offset the food in the pictures here. They're being very artistic. Bird cherry cake with that weird bird cherry ingredient. Now we're getting to the drinks. Is it all vodka based? Oh, we're still in, no, we're still in dessert. What? Rye bread and butter pudding. I've never heard of that. That's fascinating. Okay. Napoleon cake, la la la, pretty picture drinks. Summer berry kissel, silver birch tears. Kvass, did I say that right? A bloody masha. Medoc persimmon bellini. Ooh, I've never thought to make one of those. See, I love the ideas in this cookbook. Siberian tea, vodka infusions. We know how to do those, right? Pine nut vodka? What? Well, that could be kind of savory and interesting. Okay. Page about suppliers. Where you get some of them. A lot, a lot in the index. Okay. I can't wait to hear what you think. Do you own any other Russian cookbooks? How does this compare? Have you taken any Russian cooking classes? Are you Russian? What do you think of this cookbook? And what's the first thing you would make if you had this cookbook and started flipping through? I would make the beet patties in a heartbeat, and I might go do that. Thanks for watching. Please follow Cookbook Divas on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook.